Describe the man you would like to marry. When you get a question like that, you have to start somewhere. I choose to start in the year 2000. Most people who have known me long enough know that the year 2000 was one of the biggest turning points in my life. I had developed severe scoliosis that was compromising my heart and lungs, and I needed surgery badly. At the end of May 2000, my family and I finally arrived at Loma Linda, California, where I was to undergo a major operation on my spine. My surgery was scheduled for June 20th, which meant I had the chance to catch the whole NBA Finals when Lakers went on to win their first championship in nearly two decades. I watched the sixth and final game the night before my surgery. Awesome. After six weeks of recuperation in the California apartment of a family friend, I finally flew back to Singapore, where my family was living at that time. I got back in mid-August, and then, on September 15, the 2000 Sydney Olympics began. I taped the whole opening ceremony on my VCR, and to this day, I still think it's the best Olympics ever. But more significant was that from the very beginning, I knew I had found him, the man I would want to marry. Yen Thorpe Sports has a way of getting people's attention. Watching the NBA Finals was really what got me started on the whole sports thing. But Yen took it to a whole new level. His speedo body suit, his size 17 feet, his rivalry with, yes, Peter Van der Hoogen Band, and the fact that he's only 17 and I was 14. It was during those months that Reader's Digest ran an article featuring Yen Thorpe and his cancer-stricken friend, Michael Williams. The story told of their friendship, how close they were, and how much fun they had before and after Michael recovered from his illness. Michael had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, but all I knew was that he had cancer and Yen Thorpe was his friend. Oh, and that Michael was 14 years old, just like me. Sometimes during those months, I would fantasize that Yen and I were married by the swimming pool. There would be many people at the wedding, but really, just family and friends. No media, no nothing. In the after party, he would carry me in his arms and into the pool. Two metal rods in my back and 88 stitches still waiting to heal after all this time. But we could be married. We could be happy. While preparing for this piece, I wondered to myself what would happen if Ian Thorpe and I were to be introduced to each other today. He's almost 27, and I'm turning 24 in December. Would I still see him as the man I'd want to marry? Things change when we grow up, and one of those things is our ideal of who we want to marry. I don't want an Olympic superstar. I don't fancy his gold medals, and I don't need that handsome smile. What I want is simply someone to make me laugh, to take me to places, and someone with whom I can spend each day, both the memorable and the mundane. Because looking back, I see more clearly now how watching Yen Thorpe in the Olympics was really just an escape for me, from the chronic pain that was developing my hips, the constant be strong comments from the adults, and the emotional isolation I felt from the rest of my friends. That whole fantasy was born out of my need to escape. But no, I don't feel that way anymore. To escape is not the reason I fall in love. The thing that has remained the same, though, is my conviction that I could meet a man of my dreams, we could be totally different, and yet we could fall in love. We're not in love because we're different, or in spite of being different. We're just in love, simple as that, and we like being together. It's quite pathetic how I still have these newspaper cuttings from the Straits Times, but I keep them in the file carefully tucked away in my bookshelf, and I don't intend to throw them away. Because someday, when I finally get married, my husband may ask me about the man of my dreams when I was a teenager, and when I get a question like that, I'll have to start somewhere. Somewhere. Maybe the year 2000. <laughs>